guys, welcome back to Nature Matters Academy. I'm here with my son and assistant, Callan. And today what we're gonna do is we are going to model the rock cycle for you guys through a very interactive activity. So if any of you guys have ever studied the rock, rock cycle, you know that it's a very abstract kind of a concept. And what this activity does is it really solidifies how rocks change um, over time based on different environmental pressures. And so, what we're going to do is we are going to start out by showing you guys the supply list and then we are going to um, get started with our activity. Alright, so it's always a good idea to start with your lesson plan and follow it as you go. So as you can see, I have mine here from um, Nature Matters Academy and we're going to start with step one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a whole crayon and give it to our child. So we've got this here. And basically what we're going to talk about is the fact that this is an igneous rock and we are going to break it down over time. So Cal, let's think about this for a second. Let's say there's some rocks outside. What do you think over long periods of time is going to make that rock break? Uh, when the days get hotter and colder. That's excellent. Yes, absolutely. When the days get hotter and colder, then um, the rock is going to change over time. If there's water in there, it can expand the rock and possibly break it. That's great. Um, what else do you think might um, cause the rock to, to break apart slowly over time or to break into small pieces? Um, by the rain um, wrapping in it. Absolutely. The rain. Also, maybe the wind, um, lots of different things can change, um, change the rocks over time. So let's take our igneous rock here and let's pretend like it is being weathered by um, rain and wind and the weather and the seasons and the sun. And as that happens, our rocks begin to erode and, um, and break up. All right, now that you have weathered your igneous rock, you have all this sediment. So we have sediment of lots of different colors. And so what we wanna do now is we want to lay down sediment um, like it would be in nature, right? Through wind carrying the sediment or water. And um, we're gonna lay it down in layers. And then what we're gonna do is compact it. So you can just put your layers directly on a sheet of foil. I've made a little foil boat for ours, because I want the layers to be very, very clear. And so, all right, Callan, let's choose a color. Which one do you want to do? Excellent. Can you pour it into that? Yes. Take, um, okay, yeah, okay. let's pour it together. All right, so now we're going to compact our rock, like what happens with sedimentary rock, right? There's layers of sediment that are laid down, and then over time it gets compacted. And so the way that we're going to do that is we are going to put this sheet of foil on top of it, and we are going to press down and compact the colors. So are you ready for this? All right, so put it down. Let me kind of help you a little bit. Okay, now press down. All right, so with our cemetery rock, um, we heated it in the oven just a little bit to make it not fall apart because I was having a hard time getting it out of the foil without it crumbling. So I heated it in a toaster oven for maybe a minute or two just to get it to stick a little bit closer together. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to cut our cemetery rock into a few different pieces so that we can basically model the three types of rocks um, created in the rock cycles. So we are working on making our metamorphic water. So I boiled this water in the microwave in a microwave safe dish and we're just going to let it set for a little bit until it starts to until it starts to melt. 
So we don't want it to melt fully because that would be making igneous rock. What we want is for it to melt just a little bit and then we're going to compact it again. So metamorphic rock is, is heat and pressure. All right, so as you can see, our metamorphic rock or our sedimentary rock that is becoming metamorphic is starting to melt. And so we are going to take it out and compact it again. All right, so what we've done now is we have slightly melted our metamorphic rock and we've compressed it again. And then we took our other section of sedimentary rock and we put it in the boiling water so that um, it will completely melt. So that's probably gonna take a little bit of time. If you need to, you can just stick your foil in the oven for a little bit, right? Because you want to get it completely melted. So, we are going to see what our metamorphic rock looks like. Alright, so I accidentally kind of broke it. Let's see. Nice! All right, so there's our metamorphic rock. You can still see definite layers and different, different types of sediment, but they have been heated and compacted, so they look quite different. Please, okay, yeah, I thought you were gonna drop it. Um, they look very different from what our sedimentary rock looks like. So now we are going to wait on our igneous rock. All right, so now you can see that we have our three main rock types. We have sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. And we actually made the rocks through a process that rocks go through naturally, right? They get compacted, then they get heated and compacted because they're deep in the earth, and then they get heated to the point where they melt. And then any of these rocks, right, can melt. Um, but also any of these rocks can um, be weathered and broken down back into sediment where it can start with sedimentary again. So it's a very um, dynamic cycle. It doesn't necessarily have a start or an end, right? Um, what we wanna do now is a little bit of application. So we have our three main rock types and we also have right here um, a rock collection. So what you can do if you have your own rock collection, this is a really good idea because it takes it one step further where um, basically you ask your child if they can pick out a rock that looks like what you guys created through this activity. All right, Callan, so first of all, we have this sedimentary rock and it kind of breaks up really easily. What type of rock do you think looks like that? Oh, great. All right, so Callan picked out an anhydrite rock and um, I, I would break it apart, but I don't want to. It breaks apart really, really easy. This is an example of a sedimentary rock. All right, guys, so I hope you learned a little bit about the rock cycle and um, through this activity, you're actually able to model the process with your kids and they can see how rocks change over time due to um, various environmental conditions and pressures. And so, like I said, if you have your own rock collection, this is a great time to pull it out and show them examples of these three different rock types. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to leave uh, your questions or comments below and um, I'll get back to you. Okay, hope you guys are having a good week. Bye.